Hi there. I think the time has come to talk about Brian and cross-dressing. Um, this goes way back, and it's a really big thing in my life. I, I ultimately can't be comfortable in my skin without being dressed as a woman, a very feminine, powerful woman, but a woman nonetheless. It goes back to about age five, I remember first being compulsed to wear something feminine. And it was uh, from my sister's wardrobe, which, let's face it, it wasn't great. You know, colour, we're not talking any kind of real innovation or quality here. And so I had to make do with kind of some pretty kind of compromised looks when I um, started doing this. Um, I remember going into her room and to uh, her wardrobe and um, I was thinking, I have to remember exactly how this goes back, whether it's on the left or right. Otherwise, she's going to discover it. And, uh, you know, of course, she doesn't kind of analyse it that much in reality. But that was my, I was fearful of it. So I used to make, even to the measurements of how far one skirt or dress was from another in the cupboard and things like that, I is to make sure it wasn't going to be discovered. Discovery was absolutely petrifying to me. I, I thought I'd just die of humiliation and shame. You know, the idea of doing what I'm doing now and actually laying it bare to an audience would just been ridiculous in those days, uh, right up to, you know, age 20 or something. It never went away. It was more intense at certain points, and it, it got better uh, in terms of more choice of clothing when, uh, I was able to get my mother's wardrobe as well, which I felt was infinitely better. Um, but yeah, it's it's always been with me. It's been with me through school. I used to steal skirts from the sports thing. I used to, um, you know, poor girl, poor girl, you know, would have come back from gym and she wouldn't have a skirt to put on. I mean, that happened a few times, you know, and it must have been quite an issue. But hopefully they have some spare skirts, but yeah, I used to steal skirts out of the sports um, changing room. Uh, I, I did it by, I was usually the one that was allowed off sw swimming or something because I was allergic to chlorine. I'd do it in those in-between moments. I remember nearly being caught doing it once and somebody looking very suspicious at me. At me. And uh, so it's, then it was kind of predominantly skirts, you know, grey skirts, the school skirts. So in my days, they, they were actually quite tight. That was the, the fashion. So they were quite difficult to get into. But I do remember feeling good being sexy. I, mem I remember that sense when I was about 11 or 12. That it was nice being sexy and I could wiggle my hips and I looked at it. And somehow I delighted in that. There was a kind of delight and I was I was disappointed because Bridget, the last thing she was into was tight cl clothing or anything sexual. You know, she she wouldn't just wouldn't be like that. I mean, she's still not like that. And uh, I was, you know, I had that desire for for a tight skirt or a tight dress. Um, and I was thin, you know, I, I was uh, about eighty kilograms. Uh, I wasn't overweight, and I looked pretty decent. I looked okay as a girl. I even got a wig once, you know, she was up in the loft. I think Morris must have bought it, and I put it on his blonde wig. And I didn't look frightful. I actually looked quite pretty. And I stuffed some socks in to make up for breasts. I kind of didn't go for a double D cup, but, you know, they were quite big. And um, I remember looking in the mirror and delighting it and kind of wiggling my bum and things like that in, in, in a skirt or something or a dress and getting... Thrilled by it, absolutely thrilled by it. Um, and one time when I was going out with Ruth, which was my first time I went out, this was when I was about 13 or so, uh, I went up and we cuddled in the top of her house. She had an attic room. And she went away and I stole one of her skirts, her school skirt. And she had two school skirts. One was a short, pleated one, which wasn't really such... I didn't really... I quite like them now, but I didn't then. I preferred it straight. I preferred it form-fitting. And she had another one which was more straight and form-fitting, and that's the one I took. And I stuffed it under my jumper, and I went downstairs, and I professed illness. And then they drove me back. And then I got home, and I, I rushed up to the bathroom, locked the door, 
and it was delightful. It was um, it actually fitted and it felt nice, and I really enjoy it. I remember that as being special. And then I hid it into a unit in my room. I had a small room, um, and I put this this skirt into this um, cupboard, which I thought wouldn't be discovered. But it actually was discovered. One time Mark came and he, he kind of started looking and, and he found this skirt in, in the thing and there was a bit of a fuss and I just ran away. I went up into my bed and tried to forget it, was, it would happen and I didn't want to mention it. And it wasn't mentioned. It was like the elephant in the room. It had to happen, but I never got questions from Morris or Mary. So did they know all the time? Were they fully aware that this was going on and never brought it up with me? I just don't know. And what other reason would I have a skirt in? you know, in my room, <clears throat> you know, Mark must have known. Um, anyway, I remember that being petrifying, you know, the, the idea of it being discovered, um, shaming and awful. It's not really, it's not shaming or awful. It's, it's, it can be quite fun, really. Um, there's nothing really wrong with it. You're not hurting anybody by doing it. It should be accepted. It should be okay. And of course, you know, coming up to modern day, I mean, we, I mean, there were all sorts of skirts. I remember liking kind of office type of skirts. I mean, you know, black pencil skirt was a favourite, or navy or grey. Um, I was quite classic, you know. I still am I, uh, into classic uh, fashion. Uh, it needs to be kind of smart, professional, but a little bit sexy, a little, a little bit form fitting, a little bit tight is my preference. Um, and I change personality when I'm dressed that way. I'm just more relaxed. I'm kind of more fun as well. It brings out my humour. Um, it's really quite important. Um, and Pamela knew. Pamela knew right at the start. I chose to tell her before we actually got got married. So she was aware of it. But I don't think she was aware how powerful it was. How much I couldn't do without it. How it's going to drive my life. Um and he went on. I remember there were lots of different incidents. I remember being easily discovered. I remember one time uh, my trousers had fallen slightly down and the skirt could be seen. I didn't realise and I'd been walking around with it being obvious. That was one time and that was in Hammersmith. Um, and I remember a few times when it was discovered. I remember putting it under my trousers, a skirt, and that felt good. It wasn't ideal, but um, and I went out and I went to work like that. And sometimes I forgot I had the skirt on, you know, um, which was quite embarrassing. And modern day, what is it like now? Well, I have a couple of black skirts. I don't have many. Um, and what happens is I get disgusted myself. I kind of buy a, a number of skirts and dresses. And I can't spend a fortune on it. I spent £500, you know, last time I did it. I had a splurge. Bought all sorts of dresses and pencil skirts and you name it. Um, but then I, I have point, points where I throw it all away because I, 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 I'm not comfortable with having the desire. So I flip between being comfortable and, be, and it, you know, really being a desire and, and being disgusted by it all. You know, that, that, that exists. Um, but there's no doubt about it. When I'm dressed in a, in a blouse and skirt or, or, or dress, um, both are equally delightful in different ways. I just feel more relaxed. That's the first thing. The tension, the stress comes off. So it's actually bloody good for autism, bloody good for bipolar. Um, I do wish that I could dress like that day by day, you know. I, But Mark's certainly not comfortable with it. I can pick that up. Uh, he wouldn't be comfortable going out with me dressed as a woman. Um, I don't know if that's because now I'd, I'd, I'd look awful as a woman. I'd look like a big fat frump, you know. Uh, I hate that. But if I was thin again, if, if I could achieve that, and I, actually I can achieve that, I don't know how you feel then, whether it will still be kind of off-putting to him, but certainly I would benefit from dressing as a woman. It would make my life easier. It would make my pressures less. And I'd delight with it. I'd have a little bit of fun with it. You know, we'd kind of go out and I'd start using the kind of language of, oh, yes, darling, and all this type of thing, you know, just make it a bit of comedy. And I enjoy that. So there'd be that aspect to it as well. But fundamentally, it's still there. It's always been there. It's powerful. I feel completely different dressed as a woman. I feel my whole energy flow is different. And I like it. I, I'm comfortable. 
It's, it's what I would choose to do if I could. And, and then there'll be an absolute delight in going shopping. I can imagine going shopping with well, Bridget. Well, maybe not Bridget, but certainly Anne. You know, Anne has taste in clothes. And I, I quite like her taste in clothes. Um, and, and shopping together for... That would be a really fun thing to do with Anne. I, I'd really enjoy that. Um, but it's... Um, it's you know it's it's one of those things that is is compromised, isn't it? Some people are uncomfortable with it, and some people in the family are uncomfortable with it. I don't think any of the untanks would be uncomfortable with it um, from knowing them. Um, but um, that, that's the story, really. Cross dressing, it, it's still a big issue. It's it's what I would prefer to do. Sometimes, actually, you can enjoy being clo male clothing, you know. But there's a fundamental thing with me. I'm very artistic. Clothing's really important to me. It's also autistically difficult getting clothing because I'm very sensitive to textures and things like that. I can be very uncomfortable. I have been extremely uncomfortable in recent days because we recent times because we haven't had any money to buy any clothes. Um, but the, the fact remains, you know, I, I, you know, I kind of fantasize about getting up and, I said, you know, is it going to be a skirt or dress today? All those kind of things, you know, just send a thrill through me. I mean, I don't know why. It's fascinating, really. We, why do we? Ha why do these things happen? Why do I suddenly have a preference for, you know, being clothed as a woman? Apart from the obvious thing that, you know, women's clothing is just so much more interesting than men's in terms of colour, texture and style. Um. But, um, yeah, that fact remains. It's, it's still there. It's still a problem. I don't really know how to resolve it. Um, but it's certainly a comfort that I miss at the moment. Anyway, that's all I'll say about it. That's an introduction. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks. <laughs>